I have an addiction. It's not to drugs, it's not to alcohol, it's not to food, it's not to money, it's none of those things. See, what I'm addicted to and what I have been addicted to since the beginning of high school is my phone and more broadly to technology. Now I want to start off by saying that this is by no means a, a sermon against the dangers of technology or anything like that. I mean, I'm a Harvard computer science student. I write software right now as a job. I make videos online for fun. A lot of my passions are based on technology and I see that there is a tremendous upside to technology, that it can be used as a wonderful tool and that the content on the internet, some of it is really enriching and inspiring and uplifting. And I mean, I do my best to create that type of content. But I also want to take a little bit of time to document the, the negative sides of technology that I've been dealing with recently. Because recently I've been in a bit of a weird place and I think I know why. A few weeks ago, I, I moved back home to my, my old room and my parents' house. And you know, I love this room, but the person that I was when I was living here, the person that I was in high school when I was leaving for college is very different than the person that I was when I came back home and from the person who I am now. You know, back when I was in high school, one of my biggest struggles was my relationship with technology. I was a huge social media guy. I loved Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, most of all, YouTube. And I would just spend hours and hours just consuming content on these platforms, just refreshing and consuming whatever the algorithms gave to me. And fairly early on in my high school career, I realized that cutting out social media entirely left me a happier person. So I did a few experiments where I just, you know, deleted everything for a month, two months, three months, whatever. And I was just a happier person. And I think when I, when I boil it down to why, it's not so much that the content that I'm consuming is bad in any way. I would classify most of the content that I consume as good or neutral. I, there's some content that is great. Watching people like Casey Neistat or Gary Vee, to me, that's always gonna have value and I'm always gonna be willing to make that investment of time. But the problem was I was spending hours and hours a day watching content that was just kind of neutral. And so the opportunity cost was really high. So when I cut it out entirely, I had so much more time to do things like, like read, like exercise, like make videos, things that actually made me happy. And so cutting out social media didn't make me happy because I was cutting out something bad. It made me happy because it gave me the potential to do so much more good. Typically also when I would end these hiatuses, I would do so for legitimate reasons. I wanted to watch more good content. Like I said, Gary Vee, Casey Neistat, those guys. I just wanted to watch their videos because I think that that's a development opportunity. And also I wanted to, you know, post my videos to the world, but it kind of became a slippery slope, right? Because I'd, I'd say that I was going on Instagram to, you know, message a friend or do that, but then I'd go on the feed and I'd refresh, or I'd say I'd be on YouTube to watch a Casey Neistat video or a Gary Vee video, and then I'd see a recommended video and then another one and I'd be pulled down into this cycle. Now, depending on how long you've been following my channel, you'll know that over the past semester at school, I worked really, really hard to find a balance with social media in my life. That is using it as a tool and as a positive resource while still giving myself quiet time and, and giving myself the ability to do things like read and make videos and so on. And I got good at it. I worked really hard and, and I was able to find a balance. But I've noticed that since I've come home, and I've been in a familiar environment where I had bad habits before, those bad habits have started to creep back into my life. I've noticed that I'm, you know, coming home from work and watching a few hours of YouTube, whatever, you know, scrolling through Twitter, scrolling through Instagram. And I feel like as a result of it, I have so much less time to do the things that I've actually really been enjoying over the past semester and that have been, have been making me happy and enriching my life. And so there's a problem there and, and I wanna solve it. I have five things planned that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna share them with you because I think many of you might be in similar situations to me. So here are my strategies. Okay, so strategy number one, the, the first thing that I'm doing that's been pretty effective so far, I've been using it for about a week, it's an app called Off Time and I'm not affiliated with them at all, whatever. Um, but basically what I, what I like about it is it allows me to whitelist certain apps. So there's a few apps that I want to be able to use during the day. So like text messages, for example, if people wanna get in touch with me, I wanna have that. 
Spotify, Google Maps, right? Absolutely, you wanna be able to use from a functional perspective, but you don't want the other things in your life all the time. So things like Instagram, Twitter, whatever. You can choose times during the day where you're allowed to use those things. So I've chosen like 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., just kind of like the period right after work. Um, and and those are those are the times where I'm allowed to do it. And otherwise, it just will block me from going on it. Okay, so the second strategy is placing a hard time box on social media interaction. So uh, this became an issue for me as I started to get a little bit more popular on YouTube. I started to get more messages, more emails, and so on. And it became a real stressor in my life to keep up with these things. And I found myself actually wasting a lot of energy just, you know, replying to messages because I want to talk to people and I want to help people and I want to make sure that I don't miss, you know, important emails. But it was taking away so much of my time and so much of my energy. So now I'm, I'm time boxing that. I'm saying I'm going to spend an hour every day max doing these things. So replying to messages, replying to emails, whatever. And if it doesn't get done at the hour, it just wasn't high enough priority for me. So the strategy here, literally just placing a hard limit on how much time you want to spend on your social media, for me, one hour. So the third strategy, one that I've done in the past but I've yet to implement so far because it's kind of hard to do, is taking intentional time away from your devices and being really strict about it. So for me, what I've done in the past is I've said, you know, at 9 p.m. all of my devices turn off and I can't turn them back on for any reason. So I definitely recommend if you're if you're thinking about times to do this for um, like an hour before bed in an hour in the morning, right after you wake up, not going on your devices then, it can make a, a huge impact, at least speaking personally, um, from a mental health perspective. Um, setting up your day in a way that doesn't start with just noise, noise, noise um, is amazing. And actually being able to fall asleep uh, without lying there for hours is also pretty amazing. So the fourth thing that I'm doing, it's actually something that I haven't started yet and I have never done before in the past, but it seemed really obvious when I was writing this up. I call it fighting back against the algorithm, which is kind of funny, but the basic idea is that YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, they all have designed algorithms that are, that are made for you to consume as much content as possible. That is, they're only heuristic. It's, will this person click on it? How do we maximize their clicks? And how do we maximize uh, their view time? And this doesn't take into account anything that I personally value, right? It doesn't take into account uh, which videos are gonna be valuable, which ones are gonna be insightful, um, what's gonna enrich my life, what's gonna make me a happier, more productive person. None of those things are considered by that algorithm. It only cares about driving clicks, which is totally understandable from a business perspective, but it doesn't make sense that I'm gonna listen to it. So I'm not gonna be clicking any recommended videos. The only videos that I'm gonna be watching are the ones in my subscription feed for creators that I really do respect and care about and that my friends have shared with me and I'll continue to find new creators through, you know, friends sharing people with me, but I'm not gonna be exploring the depths of YouTube anymore. And same thing with Instagram, right? I actually unfollowed pretty much everyone on my Instagram. I unfollowed over a thousand people um, and now I follow 14 people. And those are the people whose content I genuinely want to consume. I'm fighting back against the algorithm, if you will, and uh, refusing to consume this recommended content because I know that it's not recommended to me because YouTube or Instagram thinks that it'll be good for me. It's recommended to me because they're taking advantage of the vulnerabilities that I'm aware that I have. So I'm just safeguarding my own vulnerabilities there. The fifth and the final thing that I'm gonna be doing is something that I got really good at in second semester and again, kind of left behind at school and that is daily scheduling. So my growth book, uh, thank you so much to all of you who ordered it. It's now sold out on Amazon, which is crazy. And I've ordered a bunch more. Um, and hopefully by that time also, they will be available for international shipping so that, you know, everyone that wants to get one can get one. So stay tuned for that for sure. Now, I fell out of that habit because I actually ran out of pages in my growth book. And when I did that and I moved back home, it was just a habit that I lost because I was taking some time away from just, you know, structuring activities and I never got back into it. So um, starting tonight, that's a thing that I'm gonna be doing is just structuring my days. And I found that that is incredibly effective. And the method that I use for that, the method in the growth book, in terms of setting goals and uh, recalling motivation. And then at the end of the day, things that I'm thankful for helps my mental state 
so much and it helps me to be happy and productive and to take advantage of the little spots in my day where I might have the opportunity to read for a bit. You know, I wanted to share those with, with the world because I think there's a lot of people in a very similar situation to me. Um, and I wanted to share the tactics that have worked for me in the past and are currently hopefully going to work for me again. If you're somebody that has dealt with this in the past and you feel like you're in a better place now, feel free to leave a comment about what different strategies you might have used because like I'm always open and I'm always trying to improve more and this is a big element of my life where I can be doing that right now. So I want to end off the video just by making a little bit of a shameless plug. The Improvement Movement uh, merch store has just now dropped. It is available improvementmovement.co. Um, worldwide shipping if you're interested in supporting me. But yeah, just been having some fun with that. And um, hopefully, hopefully this whole social media technology thing is something that I can get back into check again, which I think I will be able to. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a wonderful audience that I can, uh, you know, talk about problems in my life to. And uh, thank you again so much for all of your support. It's been, it's been really cool. And um, I'm just really excited for the future. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Friday.